Safety Council later today to discuss potential plans by Wrexham Power for a gas-fired power station on a local industrial estate. Plans are still in the early stages, but have already been delayed by landowners refusing permission for environmental surveys. Our reporter Sarah Easdale is in the village of Isakoid for us this morning. Sarah, good morning. Good morning. Yes, I'm here at Issaquoid Village Hall near the local primary school here. And uh, if this power station were to go ahead, Felicity, well, we'd be right in the shadow of it here. We're just across a field from where it would be. And I'm joined by the chairman of Wrexham Residents Against the Power Scheme, a group uh, set up in opposition to the plans. Stephen Whitby, thanks for coming down. Now, Wrexham's vast industrial estate is a good place for a power station. Surely, what are your objections? Well, you're, you're right to say it's a good place for a power station, but our argument will be it's not the right power station for this location. What Wrexham, power, what Wrexham Industrial Estate wants is a power station that will be of benefit to the industrial estate, not just a conventional big power station that could be anywhere in the UK and would actually be better sited somewhere where the electricity is needed. This power station will only bring benefit to the people behind it who are property developers in London and Birmingham. It it's going to be quite a big, big place, this, as well, isn't it? Quite high, quite a visu visual impact uh, would be quite uh, immense. It'll be an absolutely enormous power station. To give you an idea of scale, Connor's Key power station, only 12 miles away, supplies enough power for half of Wales. This one, if it goes ahead, will be... 30 metres high, it'll have chimneys that are 90 metres high, string of pylons 47 metres high. 47 metres is higher than St Giles Church in Wrexham. So you won't get away from it, it'll be a, a dominant thing right on the edge of the industrial estate, it's not in the heart of the industrial estate. Here we are in open green fields and this thing will be seen for miles. There's a lot of, as you say, rural communities around here, small hamlets and villages. Um, you're also concerned about the um, environmental impact, the pollution, uh, potential pollution. Right. Um, if you think of the amount of CO2 that we are responsible for in our homes, you know, we're talking of figures of about maybe 20 kilograms a day. This power station will produce, we believe, uh, something like 5 million kilograms a day. Now, Wrexham Authority is doing an awful lot of work to drive its contribution to CO2 emissions down. They're talking about a 50% reduction in two or three years. So we're putting in low energy street lights, solar panels, uh, making fuel just down the road to burn in power stations from recycling. So 50% reduction, and yet we've put a thing like this right in the middle of the town, and uh, it blows that out of the water. Surely you can't argue with the argument of the jobs that could be created by this. The company is saying 1,200 jobs in construction, 50 permanent jobs. Well, the company keeps saying these sort of things. It is probably true, if this is ever built, that 800, 1,000 people could work on the site over the course of three years. They won't be there all of the time. Uh, and after that, there may be 50 people. Put that, though, in context, we're also talking about a prison locally, which could employ a thousand people. We uh, are talking about businesses locally in tourism that employ 1,600 people. The proposal for the power stations is to uh, go right through the middle of the Plassey, where they employ lots of people, so we could lose more jobs than we gain. OK, well, thank you. Well, the company is in consultation with local people, but says ultimately the decision on the power station will be a UK government one. And tonight, more local people will have a chance to hear about the power station plans in Bangor on Dee, just down the road from here. And I'm sure we'll be returning to the story many times in the coming months. Stephen Whitby, thanks for coming down this morning. Thank you. And our thanks, too, to Sarah Easdale there. And, uh,